Hey everybody, this is GliderCat and it's time to play. Today we're taking a first look at an economic simulator game called CEO. CEO is currently available in early access on Steam and it's being built by a solo developer. Now it's recently coming through my wishlist looking for something a little different to play. When I came across CEO, uh, I had wishlisted it a few months ago in Steam and it looked pretty cool. So I reached out to the developer and they quickly granted my request for a press key and here we are. So thank you developer for giving me a chance to feature the game. Now real quick, I just wanna thank GliderCat patrons and channel members for their support of the channel. Without that support, I wouldn't be able to create content like this first look video and there wouldn't even be a GliderCat channel, no joke. Uh, so thank you patrons and channel members. If anyone else would like to help support the channel, there are links to do so in the description, or you can just click the thanks button below to leave a one-time tip. So what is CEO all about? It's an economic simulator where your main objective is to grow your corporation and dominate the world's markets. You do this by investing in businesses up and down the supply chain across over a hundred different products that are in the game. Now, if you visit the Steam page and see all the screenshots showing the charts and graphs, you might get the impression that CEO is a game that would have a steep learning curve. I can tell you that while the game does have a lot of depth, I found it super easy to come up to speed and start playing. Uh, CEO gives you complete freedom to build your business empire as you see fit. It's very kind of sandbox feel. You can do what you want, lots and lots of freedom. For example, Maybe you want to focus on agricultural products. You want to be in, build an agricultural empire. If so, you can invest heavily in building farms and then make further investments in research in order to develop the highest quality commodities available on the market that will command the highest price. Now, maybe instead you want to focus on industry. In that case, you build factories of different sizes to refine raw materials into finished goods. First, you'll need to identify which products have the largest unmet demand in the market and thus the highest potential for profit. Then you'll seek out suppliers that you can purchase the necessary raw materials from that offer high quality materials at a reasonable price in an effort to maximize your profit margin. And there's several different suppliers in games that you can choose from. Then after you've got your supply secured, you'll set up your factories and your warehousing to ensure that you can meet the customer demand that's uh, available in the market. Want to command a higher price for your products? Well, then you'll need to make some investments in advertising to bolster awareness of your brand. And doing so could pay off big, especially if you have hungry competitors offering up the very same products that you're making. Now, maybe instead of making products, you want to focus on retail sales. If so, you'll invest in stores and try to select the best locations in the city that will ensure the high foot traffic that you're going to need. It's a classic scenario of buy low and sell high. You'll need to sift through dozens of products offered by multiple manufacturers to see which of them might be the most profitable to sell in your stores. Again, some strategic investments in advertising for your most profitable products might just give you the edge. Lastly, maybe you want to control the entire supply chain for the products you sell. From the farm to the storefront, you'll need to manage it all. But if you manage it well, you won't be subject to the supply disruptions and price controls that you might encounter if you were to depend on outside businesses for different parts of your supply chain. And did I mention you have competitors out there? You'll need to compete with and keep a close eye on them. Remember those high quality recliners you were making and selling at a steep premium? Well, while you were tending to other areas of your business, your competitors have been heavily investing in quality improvements themselves and are now selling higher quality products than you, and they're eating up the market while your product sits on the shelves. So CEO gives you multiple ways you might go about reversing the situation, and it's up to you to decide how you wanna go about tackling this problem. There's a myriad of ways you could go after that problem and reclaim the market share you once had. So that's a very high level overview of the game. Now let's dive in a little deeper into some of the game mechanics. Okay, I've opened up the save game from the Let's Play CEO series that's going to post to the GliderCat channel uh, shortly after this first look video posts. And we're not going to go through all of the gameplay necessarily, but I do want to take you through one complete supply chain and just kind of show you the different components. And then we'll also look at some of the 
the interface here and see the different displays and information that you have available to you in the game. First, near the top of the screen here, I am going to click on this little bar graph. And that's going to give us an overview of our entire corporation here, the Glider Cat Corporation. You can see we've got five stores currently, four factories, etc., etc. We can see the revenue of these different areas of our business. Looks oh, zero oil wells. And then we can see our annual profit here. So we can see our stores are doing pretty bad. We're losing we're losing 13 million a year, but our farms are doing good. They're more than making up for the losses. We have offices and things. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, you've got all the products that your company is currently invested in and producing or selling the revenue profit, and then the investments in technology you've made and kind of where you stand on technology and then what research projects are currently underway and the degree to which they're going to increase your technology. We won't go into a lot of detail on that. If I unclick this button at the bottom, you can see all the products in the game. And I think I mentioned there's over a hundred different products and commodities that you can uh, create, manufacture, and sell in game. Next up, we've got an income statement, kind of pretty common spreadsheet thing in an economic simulator game like this it shows you all your purchasing costs, operating expenses, net profit, all that stuff. Looks like we are turning a profit currently, so that's good. Charts, can't have an economic simulator game without charts. This uh, display shows you your market dominance. So of the products that you're involved in, you can see where you stand against your competitors. So I'm not first in anything right now, but I'm second in quite a few things it looks like. And we got our brand. So we talked about advertising to increase brand awareness. This shows again for the products that you're invested in and engaged in. What is the brand awareness? What's the loyalty of customers to your brand? And then what's your kind of overall brand rating? And then how much are you spending per month advertising? So cool information there. Goals, this has to do with um, the scenario that you set up when you first start the game. You can set yourself up with certain income goals or net worth goals and things. I just have it set to like 40 years or something. And after 40 years, you can still keep playing. It doesn't stop. It's just a way to set some goals for yourself. And then there's a tab here for policies. How much are you going to pay your, your CEO? What's their bonus going to be based on the, on the um, profits of the business? Dividends for your stock. We won't get into too much of this stuff, but we're going to go to products. We want to look at a supply chain and we want to focus on soda. You can see it's the product with the highest annual revenue. And because in, because in this playthrough of I've invested a lot in soda. So we've got 150 million revenue, 26 million profit. Sounds kind of low actually. And our technology we've invested in it. We're at 174 and we're doing further investments in technology, but let's click on this soda. And as soon as I do that, the game brings up all the buildings in my little business empire that are either manufacturing, storing, researching or selling soda. So we've got a warehouse, a factory, an office building. That's where the research is done. And then we've got three stores. I'm currently playing on a map that has two regions. You can see at the top of the screen, it says the North. And here's the map of the North. There's a little city here. And then a bunch of open space where we can develop things that don't need to be in close proximity to the city. The city, you kind of want your stores close by. But let's look at soda. Let's go. Let's start at the factory and there's actually a stage before the factory that we're going to look at too but let's start with the factory so here's where we're manufacturing soda i am bringing in i have a purchasing office here that is bringing in bauxite from one of my bauxite mines that's being sent via this little arrow to a manufacturing unit within the factory where we're taking that bauxite and turning it into aluminum the output of that unit is going into another manufacturing unit. And this one is taking in the aluminum that we've made and we're purchasing corn syrup. And we can see the seller here is the Glider Cat Corporation. So we're purchasing corn syrup from ourselves, from another factory, basically, actually another warehouse. And then this manufacturing unit is taking the corn syrup that we're purchasing 
and the aluminum that we're manufacturing and turning that into soda. And then that soda is being sent into a sales office within our factory. And this is being sold out kind of like a, like wholesale sold out to retailers from our factory. Um, in this case, we're actually not selling to retailers. If I click on this sales and I click up here where it says soda, it'll show me what's the cost, how much are we selling it for? What's our overall rating, which takes into account our brand and our quality. So we're at a rating of 92. The region average is 65. So we're, we've got a product, a soda that has a higher reputation than the average. And then we can see some supply and demand bars here. The supply is lower than the demand. So demand is outstripping the supply. And there's pop-ups everywhere in the game explaining what all the data is. So that's super helpful. Right now out of this factory, I am selling, I have an option to say, hey, sell only within my company. Don't sell to outside businesses, the soda that we're manufacturing. Let's see, I click on customers. And right now we're only selling to the Glider Cat Corporation and only to this large soda warehouse. So that's where the manufacturing takes place. Now, if we go to the warehouse, double click that and bring that up. You can see we're per we have a purchasing unit in the warehouse that is purchasing from the large factory where we're making soda, bringing it into inventory. We've got a huge capacity for inventory here, but it's empty. There's a little bar here. I don't know if you can tell it's empty. And then we've got a sales office outside of our inside of our warehouse here that is selling soda out into the market. Now we can do the same thing we did last time. We can look at the soda, click here at the top display and internal sales is not checked. So we're selling this to whoever wants to buy it. And if I look at customers right now, it's only being bought by Glider Cat Corporation and our stores. So let's see. And it shows the, our costs here at the warehouse and what we're selling it for. So now we can look at our stores. Look at the first large store here. And here's soda where we have a per purchasing office. You can kind of see a pattern here. All of your buildings pretty much, except for the raw resource production, will have a purchasing unit and a sales unit, and then either um, potentially have manufacturing units and inventory units. But here at the store, we're just bringing product in and we're trying to sell it. So here's our purchasing unit. It shows the supply is not currently meeting the demand. And it shows our quality and our brand recognition. And it shows the utilization of our purchasing office. So this is how effectively, so we can read this, shows the average level of utilization for this unit over the last month. 100% means that the unit is unable to do any more work. So right now, utilization of our purchasing office is at 36%, which means they are not bottlenecked. They're not a bottleneck. They're able to purchase product and they're not a limiting factor. If they were, we could invest in training. So it says down here, the efficiency of this unit, higher efficiency units can move store and produce more units per day. And this can be increased with training. So if, for example, we had hundred percent utilization, I could kick up my training and then we'd be able to purchase more soda and get it into the store. But right now we're fine. That's not a bottleneck. Here's our sales office. Again, it's showing supply and demand. Our utilization of the sales office is 50%. So we're not bottlenecking on that. I'm also in the sales office. I'm investing in my brand. So I'm spending 104,000 every month to bolster our brand and kick up this score so that our product becomes more popular in the market. Now, if I go to the top here and I scroll over to the soda, I can see what our cost is. So we're our cost to get it to the store from where it's being manufactured all the way down to the store. The price is dollar 18 and we're selling it at that price our rating is 90 which is high that's pretty good there's our brand and our quality and those two things go together to make up the rating in fact it may even tell us what that is rating is a combination of brand rating quality rating and our price attractiveness 
Now, there's our store. We're in the north. If I want to see how competitive we are in the north, selling soda in the north, I can click the soda icon here. Choose the north. And here are all the retailers that are selling soda. I can see what the prices they're selling it for, what their quality and brand ratings are, and then overall what their what their overall rating is. So this rating for Dalio Corporation, they're buying their soda from the Seaport, which is like a wholesaler, and they're just reselling it. They're selling it for 74 cents and they've got a rating of 72 and there's their revenue. It doesn't really give me a number there, but you can see it's a little chunk. If we compare that to us down at the bottom, we're selling for a dollar 18 a unit. It's the highest price of everybody in the North that is selling soda. So I'm selling it for the highest price, but I've got the highest quality and I've got the highest brand recognition, which is giving me the highest rating. In fact, I'm way high on this rating. And so you can see I've got the highest revenue, but I believe if I want, because I've got the most popular product by far, I could, even though I'm, I'm selling it for a, the highest price of anybody, I can increase this price. So let's do that. Here is our store in the North. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the, I want to keep my rating high and the rating takes into price. But I want to stay maybe two or three above my next and closest competitor, which is Murdoch Enterprises here at 73. So I'm going to increase the price and we're going to watch this rating go down and I'm going to let it go down all the way to 75 so I can get a higher price for my product and hopefully bring in more revenue doing that. We already know that the demand is outstripping supply. So let's kick up the price. I can do that over here at the store. And we're going to keep an eye on this rating as I kick up the price. Boom. Now we're selling for $1.20, $1.22, $1.24. And we'll keep going until I get that rating down to like 75. Oops. And we're back. So we were selling at something like $1.18 maybe. Now we're selling at $1.77. We are still, even at that price, we are the highest rated product in the North selling soda. Now that could change as these other retailers, if they invest in advertising or they improve their quality or their brand and get their rating up, or they could lower their price, they could steal more of the market share. But right now we were leaving profit on the table. So though that gives you an idea of some of the kind of the levers and how to use some of the data that they put in front of you, while we're on this soda screen, let's close all this other stuff. So this is showing how all the information about soda. Here's the retail information. If I go to trade, this shows everybody who looks like is producing soda. So the large warehouse, Glider Cat Corporation is selling it. My factory is selling it. And there's a factory at Balmer Corporation that's selling it. In fact, and so is the seaport, I guess, too. So you can see Balmer and seaport. I'm not sure why it doesn't show seaport here. Maybe that's south. Consumer goods seaport. Okay, yeah. In the south, there's a seaport also selling soda. Then if we look at this recipe screen, this is kind of showing what does it take to make the soda. It takes corn syrup, it takes aluminum. You can choose to invest in quality and outcomes soda if you're able to make these things. And then if I want to click in on these, I can click in on aluminum and see what the recipe is for that. Take the bauxite with some technology and make the aluminum. We're already doing this. And then if I want, I can look over here on the right and see all the ways I can use aluminum. Here's all the different products on the right here that use aluminum, beer, cars, electric cars, electric scooters and soda. That's the one that we're making. You can see these products, the electric car takes aluminum, circuit boards, batteries, wheels and a tire and a car interior. So it's a little more complex. We're just doing corn syrup and aluminum to make our product. So lots of information here about the products. Incidentally, let's take a look at the soda factory again. Let's go back and go to soda. 
Boom, double click that, get all my buildings. They have to do a soda. There's one we didn't look at, that's these offices. So let's open that up and see what this is about. So this is an office building where we can invest in just the technology behind making soda. And as we invest in technology, it's gonna improve our, I believe our quality rating um, for the product and that event that essentially is going to increase our ability to, or enable us to charge more for the soda we're producing. But right now I've got a pro a research project underway. You can see it's a 36 month project. My current technology level is at 174. And when this project completes in 36 months, I'm going to add 17 points to my tech level. And again, that all kind of rolls up into our rating. And that rolls up in how much we can actually charge for a product. Now, if I wanted to start a new project, it looks like this office is pretty much full. Um, I don't think I can. Let's see. What can I do here? Not, m I can't really do much. This, I believe, is, because it's got one little square here, this is a small size research project. You can see some of these are have two squares. That's a medium. And if we had any that had four squares, though, that would be a large research project and we'd get more benefit from that. Instead of getting the um, plus 17, if it was a larger research project, obviously it would cost us more, but we would get more benefit from it. So that's what kind of, in a nutshell, what research is all about, just investing in the products that you're manufacturing so you can get a higher rating, better, not brand reputation, but better quality. And I think it, it may lower your cost to produce as well. Okay, the other thing we want to look at in the factory here, we said we were purchasing this corn syrup from the Glider Cat Corporation. Let's see if we can figure out where that is. Pretty sure we're getting it from this warehouse. So we've got a warehouse that is purchasing corn syrup from a factory that's making corn syrup, storing an inventory and then selling it. We have the sales from this warehouse limited to companies within the Glider Cat Corporation. And if I look at customers, you can see Large Factory 2 is where we're selling this corn syrup. And that's where we're making the soda. Is it Large Factory 2? But where am I getting this corn syrup? I'm getting it from Large Factory 1. The naming's not so great. Those are my choices. <laughs> let's uh, let's go find it. I don't, don't know if I can click that. Yeah, there we are. Large Factory 1. So here is our little... We have two corn syrup lines here. I'm purchasing corn from a farm. Lar from actually a warehouse, I should say. Also part of the Glider Cat Corporation. Sending it into a manufacturing unit. The crate corn syrup. And then this corn syrup I'm turning into hard candy. And then I've got another production line here making corn syrup. So bring in the corn, make corn syrup, and I'm actually sending it to the candy production and sending it into a sales unit. And this sales unit is, I believe, selling to factory two. Let's see, customers. Oh no, it's selling it to our warehouse. That's where we just came from. And where are we getting the corn from? This is a warehouse in our empire. Purchasing corn, putting it in inventory, selling it. That's really all that takes place in our warehouses. And where am I getting that corn from? Corn farm north one. Boom. Here's a corn farm in our little empire. And in the farm units, I've got crops growing. I could do livestock if I wanted. We could do a livestock unit. We could process livestock or we can go crops or we can even have inventory within our farm if we want. And then every, every building pretty much has a sales unit to get the products out. So we've got three crops growing of corn. They're getting pushed into inventory and three different sales units. In the crop growing, this is where we can actually invest in the quality, the core quality of our product. So for this corn crop, we're investing 202,000 a month to increase its quality. 
I think it starts out at something like 30, but we've been investing for quite a while. And so the quality has gone up to level 73 out of this particular farm. And it looks like I may have set these all up at the same time. Here's one that's a little bit lower, 71. And we're investing maybe a little bit less. And so that's how you increase the quality. And again, that feeds into the rating for all of the end products that uses corn. So that goes into the rating for the corn syrup and it goes into the quality rating for the soda that's made from the corn syrup. So this is where you can invest in the quality. But that is kind of in a nutshell, a production line. You can start from a farm. I'll show you how you place those down. Got all our buildings here. We can build stores, factories, which we saw, farms right there. Farm, we just click it, pick what size we want and then find a spot on the map to put it. Now, farms can be out far away from towns. doesn't make much difference. Stores, however, if we were to build a store, we would want that as close to uh, the inside of town as we can. And you can see, based on where we put it, the land cost is going to go up or down, depending on what's already there that we're going to have to clear out. What else can we build? We can build warehouses. We saw that. The inside of one, there's the office buildings where we do the research. There are mines we can build. So the bauxite that we use for those aluminum cans. There's also, I believe, iron and these are the mines here. There's silica, there's chemicals, gold, copper mine that's already owned, gold, uh, chemical mine that's already owned, more bauxite. So you can see those on the map here, little chunks of rock. Then we've got oil wells. I have not messed with oil yet. I don't know where those are actually. Place well on an oil field. I'm not sure where the oil fields are. I have not gone into that. I haven't gone into that part of the game yet, so I can't speak to that. And then we've got logging camps that we can build. That'll get us lumber. What else we got going on over here? We've got a display of all of our buildings in our empire or any other company's empire. If you want to look, these are the competitors we've got, Balmer, Dalio, Murdoch, and Soros. So I can look at their buildings. And then uh, if we go back to GliderCat, I can sort by the region, north, south, or all regions. And when you set up the game, I think you can choose up to four regions. You can play with one, you can play with four. I think the advertising is region specific. So your investments in advertising in the north may not carry over to the south. Um, I believe that's the case. I'm not positive on that, but it basically extends the terrain that you're going to be um, operating your business in. We can filter by the different build building types. We just went through all those store, factory, farm, warehouse, offices, mine, oil well, and logging camp. And this one's really handy filtering by the products. Remember when we wanted to see all the buildings that had to do with our soda, we can do that here as well and just pick soda. Glider cat, all regions. Then we get the same display, our three stores, our offices where we're doing the research factory and our warehouse. So super useful tool here to navigate to any of your buildings by product, by type. You could go look at all your stores and go through them and see which ones are profitable, which ones aren't. So here's, uh, all of our stores. Here's all the, sorry, all the stores selling soda. And then here's all of our stores. If I just turn off this filter, all of our stores in our empire, I don't have many. And I can see, Hey, this one is losing money. I need to go look at what's going on in this store. Same thing with this one down here is losing money. So let's go work on that store and figure out, you know, which products are failing or am I spending too much on advertising, which is probably the case here. I've got a lot of products I'm selling. I'm investing a lot in advertising. So it could be that, uh, that's adding up to, um, more, more money spent on advertising than, than we're bringing in, but lots of data in the game to help you here. Obviously just a quick glance, beef jerky, look at our supplies, tiny, look at the demand is huge and we're manufacturing this. So that's a, that's a indication that there's something wrong in our supply line for the beef jerky that we could go chase down. Increase our production of the beef, increase our manufacturing of the jerky. Maybe, uh, yeah, this is clearly a supply issue. We could raise the price temporarily since we're not able to meet the demand anyway. 
Lots you can do. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, these are all the products in the game. And we can pick the ones that are that we're making and see what our what the competitiveness is, our competitiveness versus the other people that are in the beef jerky game. Very cool. And again, you can filter it all different ways. Okay, this is the sheet that we saw at the very beginning. We've got filters here. We can see the land value. We can see um, building ownership. So these are the different competitors based on their color, where they have properties and stuff. Are they taking over a market? Are they taking over valuable retail space here in the city? We can see that at a glance with that filter. And then this one is profitability. I'm not, maybe it's my color blindness, but I'm not, I can't tell what this is all about. This one, if it's just the glow or something, I can't, can't really see that. Maybe you would tell me if the stores are um, not profitable. Not sure on that particular overlay. Again, it could be my color blindness on that one. A little bit of information about the regions. In this case, we've got two, north and south. Stock market. We can decide to take over other companies. So if I look, I got two kind of clients here. Ladder Cat, which is the CEO of my organization, and then I've got my corporation itself. And we've got $103 million in the bank right now. Now, if I want to buy up another company, say I want to buy up Soros Enterprises, I've already owned $397 million worth of their stock. And you'll see in the Let's Play how I got to this point. But I can, if I want to buy them up, just start buying their shares over time. So I'll spend, how about 35 million and buy some more shares. Click buy, boom, now we own 5.33%. Doesn't sound like much and it's not. <laughs> if we get to 50% ownership, we can assign a CEO to the Soros Corporation. If we get to 75% ownership, we can take over that entire corporation all of their businesses, all their stores, mines, manufacturing, warehouses, factories, all that stuff, research buildings, and pull that into our um, organization with the click of a button. But we got to get to 75%. And obviously, it's going to take a while on this one. They've got a super high stock price compared to ours. We're only at 160. They're at 300. But that's another thing you can do in the game. And you can choose who you buy your stock from. Here are all the different stockholders that own shares in um, the Soros Enterprises. Pretty cool. Lots you can do with that. Stock exchange. Loans are running low on cash. Take a loan. I can right now take a loan of $421 million. Now, when I started or when my bank balance was lower, or I didn't have as many assets and buildings, I couldn't take out a loan for that much. I could take out a loan for maybe $21 million. So as your empire increases, your ability to access credit increases as well. You can see once you get to a point, the interest rate's going to go up. But you can stay at 4%, pretty low. I can borrow 161000 here at 4%. That's another aspect of the game. What do we got here? Corporations, just overview of the different corporations in the game, what their profit is, annual revenue and profit. You can see we're not doing so great. <laughs> That's <laughs> so great compared to our competitors, but it's my first playthrough. What else? What else? We down here. These are the different people in the game and what their assets are. We saw GliderCat's the CEO of GliderCat Corporation. I've got GliderCat's salary set pretty low, so that's why his assets are low. And GliderCat is buying um, stock in the GliderCat Corporation. So that's why he looks kind of low, and he, but he has a, a decent amount of stocks. And then these are our competitor companies, what they're doing. auctions now periodically as you play i've had the game pause this whole time periodically as you play businesses from your competitors they will auction off their business it could be a mine it could be a store it could be a factory that's already got industry in it that'll pop up on the screen and you've got the option to bid on that property and maybe pick up a factory pretty cheap now once you do You'll have to go in there and optimize it and make sure that it's actually profitable. You could quickly buy something in an auction, forget about it, and not realize for 
a few game day months or game in game months or years that 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 business you just bought has been losing money. So it's one way to acquire properties cheap, but you need to kind of get in there and clean it out once you get it. Okay, here is the product guides. You can look at input products and pick a product. This we kind of already saw. This shows you how to make different things and all kinds of information about it. So here in this case, pizza takes bacon flour and two wheat germ oil. Those are all products you can manufacture in game. You can add technology to increase the quality and it shows you what you get. Three frozen pizzas. And then the quality of the frozen pizza is going to be derived from 20% of the quality rating for your pizza is going to be based on the quality of the bacon going into it. 30% the quality of the flour going into it. You kind of get it. And then the tech level, this is what we're researching in the office. So if my tech level is a hundred, then 40% of that hundred is going to go into the overall quality rating for this product. And it'll be different for different, um, obviously different for different products that you manufacture. Buildings, this is kind of like a, in this guide here, it'll tell you a little bit about each building in the game, how to use it, what the different components are for, how quality is assigned, all kinds of stuff. Super helpful when you're just getting started. And there's some tutorials at the beginning of the game as well that you can choose. I think there's four or five short tutorials. Very clear, very straightforward, very intuitive. Not a hard game to get up to speed with in my view. And then we've got some more general information here, almost like a glossary of terms and business concepts that you can learn about. We've been talking a lot about the product rating. This talks about how that rating is actually calculated. Brand rating times the brand concern plus the quality rating times the quality concern plus the price rating times the price concern. And those concerns are different for every product, but you can read through this and learn more about the business. They're not, there's not a lot here actually. I mean, it's, it's fair. Like I said, it's fairly straightforward. And what else? Is that it? Uh, there's a mini map on the bottom. I haven't really made use of that too much. There's some news. It shows the research that's been achieved recently. Those research projects in the office that have been completed. Financial news. Here's the stock that we just bought. And then this is a uh, game settings. You can choose what notifications you want to come up pop up on the screen and which ones you want to ignore. And yeah, pretty cool game. I like it. I like it a lot. You can control the game speed here. There's four settings top of the screen. Again, you can choose the region. I'm playing on a, a game that has two regions currently, and you can deploy businesses across regions, trade between regions, you know, buy and sell products between regions. It's just an extra play space. And again, I think there's a, um, I think the advertising might be region specific. So if I spend a bunch of money in the South, that advertising may not carry over into the North. And yeah, that is it. Pretty cool game. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Again, the game's called CEO. It's available now in early access. It's being developed by a single developer. I've got a let's play series that will start or post to the glider cat channel soon after this video, maybe a day or two later. And, um, I haven't encountered a single bug playing it plays super smooth. Again, very intuitive pulls you in once you start playing. So I encourage you to if you like economic sim simulators, definitely give CEO a look. I recommend it. I don't usually recommend games in these videos, but I do recommend this one. It's a lot of fun, very approachable. And yeah, we'll leave it here for now. Again, I want to thank GladderCat patrons and channel members for their support. There would not be a GladderCat channel without that support. Um, channel is small, ad revenue is teeny. Um, so I really rely on that support to keep the channel going. Thank you, patrons and channel members. And yeah, stay tuned for the CEO Let's Play. It's coming soon. It'll post the GladderCat channel in a day or two. And then if you like learning about cool new games, just like CEO, I definitely recommend you check out my first look playlist. There's a link to that in the description of this video. It's full of games that I know you'll find something you enjoy that maybe you didn't know about. I tend to feature games very early in their development. Um, this one's available to play. Some of the games in that playlist are not even out yet. So definitely check out that first look playlist. And for now, this is GladderCat signing off saying thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.